Help us. Please. He's not moving. Crying. I. I don't want to lose him. Thank God we saw the lights. That's the moment our lives changed. And no, I wasn't the one knocking. I was on the other side of the door. Shocked at the sight of a grown man crying with his child laying soft in his arms. Hanging by a thread. Almost frozen to death. But it wasn't just our lives that changed. 17,341 hard-working Americans are now living a better life, with a lot more money in their pockets. Now. I know you'll think you've heard this before. And your BS senses are going off. But what I'm talking about it's not a well-guarded secret or a never-before-seen device made by some forgotten genius inventor, it's actually something simple that thousands of people use. But in an inefficient and expensive way. Used properly. It will help you slash an excess of 70% off your power bill overnight. That's over $2,000 a year. Not only that, but it's lightweight and portable, so you can take it whenever and wherever you want. Just put it in the trunk and you're good to go. And no. You don't need a second mortgage to afford it. Actually, you'll get it up and running with just dimes on the dollar. Hi, my name is Ryan Tanner. And today you're going to learn how a simple and ingenious device saved six lives during a monstrous Wisconsin flash blizzard. And turned the tide against the corporate fat cats once and for all. I'm guessing you might have seen on the news the sheer power Mother Nature unravels during the cold Wisconsin winters. Or you might have experienced it yourself. Any way you turn it. It's nothing you can take lightly. And almost always. Catches you off guard. I've seen with my own eyes how a bright sunny sky darkens in a matter of minutes. Temperatures drop by 30 and 4 feet of snow impairs 21st century technology sending everyone in the dark ages. In a matter of hours. Because that's where we'd be without light. And warmth. The whole money in the world won't help you. No gov will protect you. Chances are, when disaster strikes. 99% you'll face it alone. So. Only one thing can make the difference between starving and being fed. Freezing and being warm. Light and darkness. And that's being prepared. And with today's response in disaster situations. You might be looking out the window, freezing both inside or outside. Or even worse. For up to a week. Remember how fast action was taken during the Katrina disaster? Or the 2011 blackout? I think they're still hauling aids and supplies there. Not knowing five years have passed. So who's your best bet? The government. Or yourself? I lost the bet on the gov once. And six people almost lost their lives. Only a simple contraption made the difference between life and death. And it's something each and every one of us should have. Because no matter where you live. North, south, east or west. Mother Nature always has something that can turn your life upside down. Tornadoes, hurricanes, blizzards, floods. You name it. And gov officials are only going to watch and all. Or God forbid, count the bodies on live TV. Imagine the toughest, coldest winter. Four feet of snow as your eyes can see. You get through it somehow. But when spring comes you won't be happy and joyful like you see in the movies. Cause all that snow melts. And flash floods will be knocking at your door. You have to be prepared around the clock. So I think it's time everybody started caring for themselves. And I'm not talking about massive stockpiles. Sure, you could do that. But actually all you need is a well-equipped and stocked kitchen. A good heater or AC unit and green electricity. This is something that can save your life. And your loved ones around you. Six people are still here today to tell the tale. And 17,341 hard-working patriots are now making the biggie picking up the tab. Here's what some of my close friends had to say about it. At first I was a bit skeptic when it came to solar. I thought it was too expensive. But my wife pushed me to give your system a try. I'm glad I did because it works just like you said it would. Thank you. Steve B. Dallas DX. Clean cut video guides. Haven't seen anything like this in a while. I got everything I needed from the first trip to the store. That's what I hate most. Second trips for supply and parts. Thankfully, this wasn't the case. I shorted the bill by 52% and am proud of it. Big thanks from Boston. So stick with me for a couple of minutes and I'll let you in on all the nitty gritty details. You need to know. As I said, my name is Ryan Tanner.
I'm a 52 years. Ho. Mechanic from Milwaukee. Happily married for 27 years and raised two beautiful daughters. Me and the girls, fall 2001. How time flies. The story I'm about to share started two years ago in a cold October afternoon. I was raking leaves in my backyard when I saw my wife slamming the back door and running towards me. I knew something was wrong. Honey. Your father. He's dead. I couldn't move for a minute. Shocked. It must be a mistake. I talked to him on the phone a couple of hours ago. But it was no mistake. God, how I wish it was. He felt he couldn't breathe so he called the ambulance. Unlocked the door and lied on the bed waiting. And that's how they found him 40 minutes later. The paramedics tried their best but it was too late. He was pronounced dead at the scene. I was devastated. We all were. But we had to face the facts and try and move on. What's worse, foreclosure notices started pouring in from the bank. We couldn't cover his debt. So we agreed on selling his cabin in the mountains where he lived. I talked to the girls and planned a last farewell trip to the cabin before selling it. It was late November. But the sun was still a bit warm. So we didn't pack thick clothing. We were going only for the weekend, after all. We arrived in the evening. Lit up the fireplace, made a few sandwiches and started talking. Remembering all the beautiful times we had there. Sadly thinking it was all over. The hours passed and we didn't notice it started snowing outside. When we did. My first thought was. We're stuck here, but then again, it was November. How hard can it snow? By 10 p.m. it was 2 feet. By 11.30 was 3 feet. I started worrying. I had winter tires on my caddy. But they were no match for this. Video player. Oh oh colon no oh 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 colon 30. I checked the fridge in the kitchen. There was still some food left. We had enough firewood for the night. The power was still on. So we thought we awaited out. At 12.15 I heard desperate knocks at the door. A man was holding a boy in his arms. His cheeks were bluish. He wasn't moving. I rushed them inside near the fireplace, covered them with blankets and made them a hot tea. After a couple of minutes the little boy started waking up. The man told us his name is Andy and they almost froze to death after their car got stuck in the snow. They lived actually not far from our cabin. But it was so dark and the blizzard was so violent, they couldn't find their way home. After stumbling for two hours in the white storm, he saw the lights at our house. And realized they were saved. He told us he hasn't seen any lights for miles. And that was odd. Because there were lots of cabins and houses nearby. Three hours later we got an unexpected visit from one of our neighbors. He brought his family over after seeing we had electricity. Hoping we could charge his daughter's inhaler. They told me the power was out since 9 p.m. But we still had the lights on. And that's when I understood. We were the only ones that had power. But why? And how? I didn't do anything for it. So where was it coming from? Nothing was different around the house. The wiring was the same. We were connected to the same grid. I started inspecting the house. The rooms. The basement. Nothing. I went and searched the shed. Something must be powering up the house. I only found six dusted toolboxes and a ping pong table. It was cold. So I left it like that. In about an hour the little boy was joyfully back on his feet. And started playing with my daughters. We all got through the night okay, a bit scared of what was going on outside, but safe and warm in my father's cozy cabin. In the morning I was restless. Trying to figure out what kept the lights on. So I inspected the cabin in the shed again. That's when I saw lights flickering inside one of the dusty toolboxes. I opened it and realized what saved our lives, my father's preparedness like a helping hand beyond the grave. A secret power bank. Each and every toolbox was a power source of its own. Three were depleted, three were still kicking at 80%. But what charged them? I took a closer look at the ping pong table. It was odd. I didn't know my father played the game. And to my amazement it wasn't a table. But a folding array of solar panels. Small and compact. Like nothing I've seen before. I must have stayed four hours in the shed trying to figure out how two small panels could have charged the whole bank. And how three batteries of that size could have powered an entire cabin for 16 hours straight. 
I had enough time to study the contraption. Because snow plows were nowhere in sight. Actually in the afternoon we had to go search for firewood and water supplies. To be prepared just in case we had to spend another night there. And we were right. No one showed up. We still had power through the second night. Although we had to cut down on the big screen TV not knowing if we were going to spend a third one up there. Help only came the next day. With the usual hassle. Like the gov was doing us a favor. After waiting for 48 hours. What if we wouldn't have had electricity? Or food? Or supplies? Or even worse? And we would have been all stranded like Andy almost was, in his car, in the middle of nowhere. Who would have helped us then? No one. And that's the thing my father in all his years understood best. You have to be prepared first. Able to help yourself and those around you. Because sitting and waiting for miracles from FEMA could get you killed. I took his notes with me and studied the plans for his solar panel system. Somehow it produced way more AC than you'd expect for that size. But what I finally discovered was that the secret laid in storage and charging times. He tweaked it until it was giving out almost twice as more power at only half the charge time. And that there was the lifesaver. Video player. Oh oh colon no oh 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 colon 58. Everybody can get solar panels up on the house or in their yard. But how long does a single charge last? How much would a normal system cost? Not to mention maintenance, snow, and all the space they take. Or even worse putting your health at risk by hanging them on the house and climbing up there to clean them. It's a nightmare when winter comes. High winds. Or when a sudden hailstorm hits. That's where my father changed the rules of the game. It took me almost a year to put all the pieces to the puzzle. I built a system for my house in the city. I only have 1,500 square feet and never would have dreamed of going solar. But with my father's help I got it going on just 20 square feet and whenever I need the extra space, I just fold them and put them in the garage. No worries. No maintenance. No headaches. It cost me a little over $200, $204.68 to be more precise, to build the first unit. And results came pounding hard the very next day. The meter was barely moving. And it reflected directly into the bill. 68% off in the first month. I did my best to cut even more. But on the scale I built it. Just wasn't possible. As I said. This is not a BS conspiracy cloaked device. There are limits. Anyway. I think I did pretty good. And the cost of $200. That's money well spent. I got it back in 3 months just by cutting off the bill. And I'm $1,369.30 on profit now. But if you really want to stick it to the electric monopolists, with just a small increase in scale, you can make that wretch meter run backwards and start making them pay you for the excess current you feed to the grid. Imagine receiving the bill. Your hand shake while you open the envelope. And yes. It's exactly what you've been expecting. The amount is negative. It's not a story. These are true facts. Personal accounts of some of my closest friends. Now let me tell you what is all about and how it can change your life. This ingenious solution can work anywhere to power everything from the small radios, to big refrigerators, big screen TVs, computers or even houses. It's perfect to use in any situation. Especially in disaster situations when all the energy lines are down and you need electricity for preserving the food in refrigerator. And for cooking, as I told you, six people are still here to tell the tale. It won't take half the yard to assemble. Only a couple of square foot and you can just fold the panels and put them in the garage whenever you want. But it's so powerful that it can reduce your entire electricity bill by 68% instantly. Even if now you're paying $250 a month. And you can find parts for it anywhere at any local shop or online. Not only that. But the batteries don't have to be new. My father didn't pay hundreds of dollars for them. New isn't always the best option. He bought six used batteries from a garage sale for mere pennies and used those instead. There's a catch. DIY guides for solar panels are all over the internet. But if you follow those instructions you are looking at $2,000 minimum investment. And that's a lot of money. But no one will teach you how to make this work for under $200. Not because they don't want to. But because they just don't know. But all that was until my father came up with a way. 
he got his idea from the most common battery we all use. One that lasts 5-8 years and is recharged thousands of times. No matter how cold or hot it gets outside. The car battery. It's simple. You can find used ones everywhere. In fact, you may have a couple yourself laying around the garage. It has easy maintenance. Revives after total drain and has enough amps to weld iron. And with a well-tuned charge controller, it will never let you down. Two or three of these babies can boost any electricity source into five times more. Instantly and apart from taking the panels out once in a while to charge them. They won't need any intervention dot 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 for a minimum of five years. That means that if you gain 68% more electricity, you'll pay only 32% of how much you're paying today. Here's the shocking proof that anyone can do it and have your own device installed at home. Video player. Oh oh colon no oh 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 colon 58. The good news is that there's no danger whatsoever behind this system. Anyone can have their own money-saving device properly installed in less than 4 hours. And it can cut your electricity bill by 68% or more, starting today. This ingenious system can be built for less than $200. And as I said, most of the components can be bought at any local shop, garage or online. And if you're going to follow the videos that I've prepared for you show you exactly how to build this amazing device. Even your kid can build one by the end of the day. You don't have to be an electrician. Heck you don't even need energy knowledge. There's a catch, here, too. Everything that you're about to learn today about building your own device is dumb simple. But only if you know how to do it properly. As I said, it took me almost a year to understand my father's design and develop a simplified way to build the system. My father did it by tryouts. So you can imagine how his plans looked. But after all the hard work, the smart solar box was born. Digital product. Image for visualization purpose only. Once you'll have the smart solar box installed in your home you'll instantly be able to save at least 68% on electricity by tomorrow. Some people reported to even 120% by scaling it up a bit without spending months in trying to build 1,000 square feet of solar panels, or endangering yourself by trying to place them on the roof, and paying thousands of dollars in the process. You'll be able to take this little device anywhere with you. It's so small that it fits in your trunk, for when you go camping. One charge per battery will give you 18-20 hours of green electricity dot 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 works everywhere. And will charge even if it's cloudy. You'll be able to power any kind of household appliances from lamps and toasters, to AC units, with pennies on the dollar, anytime dot 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 anywhere, totally legal, without breaking the law. And even if the SHTF you'll still be able to have enough electricity for cooking and preserving your food, while others will beg for a leaf of rotten bread. This little device is very light and portable, perfect for natural disasters, and not only, there's no maintenance whatsoever. Maybe only to clean the panels once in a while and take out the dust from the boxes every six months. And there's no noise around it. Heck, it's even very easy to hide. If things are going crazy and looters will be on the street. It saved my life and the ones around me during the dreaded Wisconsin blizzard. Actually, Andy is visiting us frequently with his son. We're best of friends now. He also built a unit a couple of months ago, and results started pouring in. He called me happy as a clam last month to tell me all about his microscopic power bill.